Uh, yes. Uh, boy, I mean, it sure beats the alternative, don't it? <laughs> amen. I got a future, amen, in glory. What about that? Amen. You get to thinking about the blessings of God and how good God's been. You saved, amen, won't ever have to go to hell. Now, that's good enough to shout about, amen. And I've read about hell a little bit, and I'm glad I ain't got to go, amen. And uh, I'm glad to be a part of the family of God, amen, this morning. We're going to be in Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Uh, apparently, God wanted us to hear, hear a message this morning. We're going to have a re basic recap, amen, of the Sunday school hour, amen, is basically what we'll be talking about, amen. The Lord is... Uh, obviously wanted us to hear some things about forsaking and forgetting God. Amen. And we'll be in chapter number eight. The Bible said in verse number one, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe and do. Amen. It's more than just hearing. Amen. There's got to be a heeding. Amen. He said that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And that he said, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Listen what he said. Why did God do that? He said, to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which Thou knowest, knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. I say amen to that. Amen. There's some days I realize that I need this word, amen, a whole lot more uh, than I need my natural food, amen. I need the Lord, amen, and his word. Can I say there won't ever be a day for you that you won't need the word of God, amen. Amen. You'll need the Word of God to get you through another day. I promise you. Amen. It's my stronghold. I like the Word of God. Amen. It's my help in time of need. I go to it. Amen. It's a refuge for me uh, to know, amen, that God's still on the throne. Amen. That He'll do exactly what He said He would do. In verse number 4, He said, Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that... As a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Boy, we about lost the fear of God in this day and time, hadn't we? Amen. Uh, to fear him. He said, for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. Now I want to think about this for a moment. Amen. You think about the fear of God. Amen. I do what I do, amen, because I fear God, amen. Most of the time, Brother Perry, it's not because of what somebody else might would think, amen. It's because I fear God, amen, knowing that one day, amen, I'm going to stand before him and give an account of even every idle word, amen, uh, that I speak. He said, for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, he said, of fountains and de depths uh, that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees uh, and pomegranates. He said, a land of oil, olive, uh, and honey. A land, he talks a lot about this land, amen. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Uh, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron uh, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. He said, when thou hast eaten, and listen to this, and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. Verse number 11 is where we'll get our text, text at. He said, beware. That sounds like danger, Brother Hold. It sounds like a warning from God, amen, to his people. He said, man, uh, God's been good to you, amen. Uh, God has been better to you than you ever deserved, amen. Uh, we could have, he's saying to him, amen, I could have left you down there in Egypt, amen, in the land of bondage. But guess what? I not only delivered you, amen, but I brought you into a land, amen. It's a good land. He said, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and has built 
goodly houses and dwelt therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, that sounds about like a bunch of us, don't it? Amen. I mean, we came to God with nothing. Amen. We came to God with an empty basket, a broken life. Amen. He fixed our lives and filled our baskets, didn't he? Amen. And then he said, he said, man, don't ever forget that, what God's done for you. Amen. I don't ever get over what God's done. Amen. I go back to that time. Amen. When you come dragging in at the house of God, your life in a mess. Amen. I'm telling you, you were sin sick. Your life was broken. Amen. And you was headed to hell. Amen. Uh, throughout all eternity, but God, amen. I passed by and saved your soul. Uh, boy, He gave you a life worth living. He's still working in it. Uh, we living in better homes than we ever lived in. I uh, got better vehicles than we ever had. I uh, got better clothes on our backs. Amen. He said, Don't ever uh, forget how good God's been. Amen. Uh, you know what happens when you do? Uh, you return. Amen. You don't lose salvation, uh, but your life, amen, returns to what it used to be. Amen. Amen. A mess. Amen. Without God. He said this. He said in verse number uh, 13, and he said, And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, uh, and all thou hast is multiplied, he said, Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. Look at this. From the house of bondage. Amen. He said, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought. He said, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint. Man, these folks seen some great things, didn't they? Amen. How they saw the hand of God. They saw the works of God. Hi, Brother Brad, can I say to you this morning, I can testify to the same, and you can too. Amen. You've seen God do things you couldn't do. How God showed his self mighty and strong in your life. And man, he's helped you when you couldn't help yourself. And look what he said. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. Now, I say amen to that. Amen. He said, and thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand had gotten me this wealth. Amen. I brother hold he's saying to him, amen. Don't ever forget it was God. Amen. Uh, we might as well go on and say amen to that. Don't ever forget how uh, where you're at now, amen, the reason you're not where you used to be, hey, don't forget God, amen, God is the one, amen, how that did that in verse number 18, he said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, uh, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day, and it shall be. If thou do it all, forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. He said, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall ye perish because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Father, we love you tonight, this morning. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Once again, it's already been good to be in the house of the Lord. God, I thank you for your provisions. Uh, God, the peace that you've given us, the protections that we have. Lord, I pray that you'd do that work in our hearts this morning that only you can. Uh, and we'll thank you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to try to preach out of verse number 11 this morning uh, where he said, Beware uh, that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Amen. And preach on this thought of the high cost of forgetting God. Amen. Uh, can I say to you, Israel, amen, uh, forgot God. Amen. And Brother Brad, I'll find uh, uh, that they paid a high cost. Amen. Uh, Brother Holt, they paid the price. Amen. Uh, for forgetting God. In the book of Deuteronomy, we'll find uh, uh, that it's the last words of Moses. Amen. Uh, the man of God's beginning to write. Amen. Under inspiration of God. And you know what I'll find? 
mind, Brother uh, Ty. Uh, he's giving them some words, amen. It's words of wisdom, amen. He's telling them some things, amen. He said, don't ever forget God, amen. Uh, don't forget what God has done in your life. He's giving them some wisdom that they can go by. In verse number 1 to verse number 10, you'll read uh, uh, a bunch of words uh, uh, that are filled with wisdom, amen, that God's given to the people of Israel. Uh, but he also, in verse number 11 to verse number 20, uh, gives them some words of warning, amen. He begins to warn them that if you do forget God, amen, uh, this is what's going to happen, amen. It's going to be to your ultimate end, amen. It's going to be to your downfall. Uh, it's going to be to your perish, amen. Uh, just like all the other nations did that come before thee, amen. He said you'll fall as well, amen. Now think about this for a moment, amen. Uh, God had surely been good to Israel, amen. Uh, God had been good to this people, Amen. And brother, as good as God had been, I often ask myself, Amen. And when I read in the Old Testament, I ask myself, uh, how could Israel, Amen, after all the wonderful works that they saw, Amen, after all that God had done in their lives, uh, how could they turn their backs on God? And then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost, Amen, I uh, speak up and say, you know what? I've been just as good to you, Amen. I've been as good to you as I was to them. Uh, how could you ever? Amen. Uh, turn your back on me. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, this morning, uh, we had better get back to the place, amen, uh, where we refuse, amen, to forget what God has done. Amen. I want you to hold your place there uh, and turn over to the book of Judges in chapter number three. Uh, uh, you remember in the book of Judges, Brother Hold, they was bad, amen, uh, about doing that which was right in their own eyes. Amen. Uh, Brother Perry, they had went about uh, and destroyed the law of God. Amen. And went about to establish their own law and to do what was right as they in their own eyes. Uh, he said in verse number seven, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forget the Lord their God uh, and served Balaam and the groves. Amen. Uh, can I say to you that they had forgot God. Amen. Uh, but you know what they did? Uh, they paid a high price. Amen. Uh, Brother Keaton, you know what? Uh, the price that Israel paid. Amen. It don't differ much from the same price we'll pay. Amen. Amen. Uh, will perish, amen, and fall, amen, to our sins uh, if we forget God, amen. Uh, can I say to you, it's not by our own strength, uh, and it's not by our own might, uh, and it's not by our own wealth and our own prosperity uh, that we are where we're at today. It's because the good hand uh, of Almighty God has been upon us, amen. I'm telling you, friend, uh, I can look at the days of my life since I've been saved, uh, and I realize this one thing, uh, uh, that God has been good amen and he'll be good amen as long as we uh, will not forsake him amen and follow him look what he said in Psalm uh, uh, chapter number 78 I'm going to read you a few verses out of this chapter amen uh, so that we can get the picture here uh, before we get back to Deuteronomy amen uh, we'll find in verse number uh, 9 the Bible said the children of Ephraim uh, he said being armed and carrying bows uh, uh, do you know what he said brother being uh, uh, they turned back in the day of battle. Amen. I'm telling you Brother Holt, they was armed uh, uh, with bows. They had all they needed uh, but they turned back in the day of battle. The Bible said they kept not uh, the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law and forget His works and His wonders that He had shewed them. Uh, listen what He said. Marvelous things did He in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zohan. Uh, can you imagine what they had seen? Amen. Uh, they was in the bondage of Pharaoh. Uh, uh, which is a type or a picture of Satan, amen. Uh, they was down there under that old heart, a uh, uh, taskmaster boy. Uh, they was under the bondage of sin. Uh, uh, can I say they was in bondage of their selves, amen. Uh, but you know what God did? Uh, when he saw their, his people, he said, you know what? Uh, my people need a deliverer, amen. Uh, so he raised up a man, amen, and sent Moses, thank God. And you know what God did? God delivered the people of Israel, amen. Uh, can I say I remember uh, being and in bondage to Satan and sin and myself uh, when I come into the house of God and the Lord Jesus passed by he raised up a deliverer and brought me out amen of that land of bondage but you know what else they did uh, when they got out of that Red Sea amen uh, when they got out of Egypt they was heading somewhere amen can I say to you this morning uh, when you get out of Egypt uh, there's a place God wants you to go amen I'm going to tell you me and my wife was talking last night and we was talking about the things of God and how how God had been 
good, amen, to us. He saved us. Can I tell you, uh, when God saved us, he came to us when we couldn't come to him. Uh, but Brother Hope, what we was talking about, uh, over there at the Red Sea, amen, uh, when they got up to the Red Sea now, uh, you know what they began to do? Uh, they was praising God for leaving Egypt, amen. I'm telling you, they was rejoicing, amen, uh, to be out, out, out from under the hand of the taskmaster. Uh, but you'll find when they got up to the Red Sea, amen, they began to look around, amen. And you know what that Red Sea is? Is a picture, amen, of salvation. You think about it, amen, and what God done. He told Moses, he said, lift up thy rod, amen, and stretch forth thine hand. And you know what God did? God divided the Red Sea, amen. You know what in salvation? Uh, God don't expect a whole lot of us, amen. I'm telling you, he don't expect a whole lot of us. He come to us and saved us, amen. Uh, but you know when they crossed that Red Sea, uh, they sang a song. Uh, when you get saved, God will give you a song, amen. Uh, they sang a song, but it didn't take them too long, amen, uh, to lose that song of victory, amen. Uh, do you know what? They begin to wander around in the wilderness. That's what a lot of folks are doing today. Uh, wandering around in the wilderness, amen. Uh, but you know as they got to going, uh, they come up on the Jordan, amen. Uh, and as they got there to Jordan, amen, do you know what? Uh, God required a little bit more out of them, amen. Uh, do you know what? It wouldn't more, no longer just lift up your rod, amen. It wouldn't any longer. You know what I found now? Uh, very little is required of you in being saved, amen. Uh, but God requires a whole lot out of you uh, to serve him, amen. It's going to be a whole lot more, amen, uh, than just talking to talk, amen. Uh, you have to learn to walk to walk, amen. I'm telling you what comes out of our mouth had better match up what comes in our lives or it's a hypocrisy to those around us, amen. Hey, but you'll find here, Brother Perry, uh, God had been good to these people. Look what he said on down here. And where was we at? In verse number 13, he said, He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand as a heap. Amen. Hey, can you imagine as uh, the children of Israel uh, begin to cross that Red Sea? Amen. And they looking around. Uh, can I remind you now, listen. Uh, there was probably some rough terrain to go in through in that, brother. It probably wasn't smooth sailing like we all get to mind. I imagine there's some rocks and bumps and bruises along the way, amen. Uh, but you know what? On each side of them, uh, God had built a wall, amen, out of water. Uh, they crossed across on dry. Now listen, uh, what if you and I had experienced that, amen? Uh, can you imagine, amen, uh, these people, amen, experienced the presence and power of God, amen? Uh, God had been good to them, amen. Uh, they realized, can you imagine how uh, the jaws begin to drop when they look and seen what God was able to do? Amen. Uh, can I tell you, some of us ought to have our jaws dropped this morning. How good God's been to us and what he's done in our lives. Amen. I'm telling you, God's done more than we ever deserved. And we know he has. Amen. Uh, but here they go crossing over. And man, they realize how good God's been. And you know what Moses is telling them? I don't forget God. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, uh, God's been good to us. Amen. Amen. And if we forget him, we're going to regret it. Amen. Uh, look what he goes on and says there. He says, as in the daytime he also led them with a cloud. Amen. Oh, what a good God we serve. Amen. He said, you know what? I'm going to shelter my people from the heat. Amen. How do you know what? It might have might have still been a little warm, but it wasn't near as hot as it could have been. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, since I got saved, I've been in some warm waters. Amen. But it ain't been as hot as it could have been. I'm glad that God's on my side. Amen. I'm glad that he'll walk with us and give us a cloud by the day. But look what he said. He said, fire by the night. Amen. He said in all the night with a light of fire. Can you imagine now this folks here had seen God doing some things. Can you see them looking as on as the hand of God, amen, that was upon them, Brother Ty? You know what? He didn't just bring them out of Egypt and leave them alone, amen. God don't ever save you, amen, and leave you to yourself. You know what he does? He wants to lead you somewhere, amen. And he's trying to do that with these people, amen. He claved the rocks, the Bible said, in the wilderness and gave them drink out of the great depths. He said uh, the, he brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. Can you imagine, amen, as they going through there? It was a land, a wilderness land. There was no water, amen. How about then God says, you know what? I'm going to give you water to drink out of a rock, amen. I'm telling you, friend, we dwell in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. How about every now and then, thank God, I come gushing forth out of the rock, amen. How that Lord Jesus Christ, it's a well that never runs dry. How when we 
about had all we can stand. And when it's as dry as it can be, he'll always give us something to drink. Amen. I'm telling you, they saw how good God was. Amen. He said he brought streams. Look in verse 17. Listen, and they, yeah, and they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Amen. Uh, can you imagine that? As good as God had been to them. Amen. Uh, the Bible tells us there that they sinned yet more against him. Amen. I don't know what's wrong with this generation. Amen. In the day in which we live, I'm telling you, God's been good to us. And the more God does, uh, the more easy that it is for us, my friend, uh, to lose our commitment to him and run back out into the wilderness, amen, into Egypt's bondage. I'm telling you, friend, uh, that's where we're at in our day, amen. Uh, the better God is, uh, the more sin we get involved in, amen. Uh, but you know what? One day, uh, God said, don't forgive me. He said, beware. He said, beware. Uh, there's a high price to pay, amen. You know, I'm wondering a little bit, what's it we're willing to pay the price? Amen, to forsake God. Are we willing to pay the price? I'm not, amen. Hey, man, I'd rather help the grace of God. I don't want ever to pay the price, amen, that'll be demanded. Amen, for the sin that we'll commit. Look what he goes on. He said, and they sin yet more and more against him. Look in verse number 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they spake against God. Can you imagine how this people begin to cry out against him, amen. After all that seen, Brother Ty, how good God had been in their lives. They spake out against him, Brother Perry. Can you imagine? He said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? I mean, now listen. The same God that brought you out of Egypt, the same God that divided the Red Sea, or the same God that, 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 that just spake and water came out of the rock, amen. I'm telling you, if he can do all that, amen, can I tell you, yes, God can provide, amen, a table in the wilderness, thank God, amen. He can do it, amen. He done it once and he'll do it again, thank God. I'm telling you, when I'm in the wilderness, I just say, Lord, I know you can, amen. You know what, sometimes, Brother Perry, I'll find myself praying, and you know what I say, Lord, I, I've seen you do it one time, amen. Uh, God, I've read about it, I've saw it, amen. Uh, now, Lord, just one time uh, for this prayer. Preacher, would you please, uh, I'd do it again, amen. And you know what I say, Lord, uh, I've seen you do great things uh, uh, down the house of God. And God, for that congregation, uh, would you please just do it again, amen. I'm telling you, friend, we serve a God disabled, amen. Brother Keith, God's not done with his people, amen. He knows what he's doing. And he goes on and he says, behold, uh, he smote the rocks that the waters gushed out and the streams overflow. Can you give bread also, <laughs> amen. Can to give bread also. Look what he's saying. Uh, can he provide flesh uh, for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this. Listen to this and was wroth. You know what God will say? You know what brother? He said man I've been good to this people. And all they do is complain and murmur and, and ask questions. All they do is question me. And you know what he goes on and he says and God was wroth. Uh, so a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel. Listen, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven, and he rained down manna upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven, and did, he said, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to fulfill. Listen to this. He, call, he caused, uh, amen, an east wind to blow in the heaven. And by his power he brought in south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered fowls like, like as the sand of the sea. Can you imagine the scene, amen? I wish you could just go there, put yourself in the middle of it, amen, and imagine what God was doing. He, he said, and, and he let it fall in the midst of their camp round about their habitat. Uh, so that they did eat and were filled uh, for he gave them their own desire amen you know what God said you know he said I'll give you what you want amen uh, but you're going to lose what you had uh, I'm telling you God will give you what you want this morning uh, but you will lose what you got amen uh, you can't have both amen you can't have the presence and protection and peace and power of God in your life and have the world too amen and go against God
God, look what he said. Uh, they were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, amen, uh, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. Uh, for all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Now listen, amen, after all this, amen, was going on, you know what the Bible says? You would think by now they'd gotten right. You would think by now, you know what God had done? God said, all right, I'm going to be good to you. And it's good, amen. You know what? They sinned, and God, God, amen, was good to them again. And you know what, Brother Brad? They, yeah, the Bible tells us they kept on sinning. He said, look at this in verse 33. Therefore their days did, uh, did he consume in vanity, and their years in trouble when he slew them. He said, then they sought him, and they returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock, and the high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they, they did flatter him. They did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. Amen. Can you imagine, amen, how this people that sound like a lot of Christians today, amen, how they got a good talk, amen, how but lack the walk, amen. I'm telling you, that's where this generation's at. We, we line up a lot, and we line up a lot with the nation of Israel, don't we? Of the church, amen, you do, hey, it's got a good, amen, uh, 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 illustration book, amen, about what the church is like today. Look what he said. He said there, nevertheless, did they flatter him with their mouth and lied unto him with their tongues? Uh, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. He said, but he being full of compassion. Now listen, I'm glad I ain't God, amen. Ain't you glad you ain't God? Amen. I, you know what? I'd have thrown the judgment at them in a minute. Amen. I'd have said, you know what? I've been good, too good to this people uh, for them to treat me like that. I'm going to open up their earth and I'm going to swallow them all up. And you know what? I'm glad that's not the kind of God we serve. Amen. He said, but he being full of compassion, I forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again again, amen. I'm telling you, friend, how that's the kind of condition that Israel was in. How when we think about that, now look in Psalm chapter number 9, amen. In Psalm chapter number 9 and verse number seven, uh, 17, the Bible said, the wicked uh, shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God, amen. Now you think about it is, now we see the example of Israel, but you know what? We also see the example of our country. Amen. You know what? Our country has forgotten God. You say what you want to, amen. Uh, this is not a Christian country any longer, amen. Uh, you know what? It's still uh, the best country on this planet, I promise you. Uh, but it is far uh, from being a Christian country. It has become godless by the day. It's wicked on every hand, amen. I never thought I'd see the day, amen, uh, that this country is in the shape it's in today. I'm telling you, we in a steady decline. You know what? When this country was founded, it was founded upon the principle of this book. And you know what? When it was founded, brother, it was but one God, amen. It was the God of this Bible. And we've turned from that, and now we serve many gods, amen. You know what? It's a shame in our day. How we cater to every God around us how beside the God of this book. How do you know what I wonder? Why nobody ever passes a law how that protects us, amen, and protects this God, amen. How but you know what I find, amen? It's because this God's the only one that is real, and he's the only one that of convict, amen. I'm telling you what, we living in a, such a wicked day, amen, this country. Think about this. Uh, our greatest threat, amen, is not the Al-Qaeda. Listen, I'm telling you, our greatest threat here in this country is not, amen, Iran or Iraq or any other country as far as that goes. Our greatest threat is the fact that we have forgotten God. Amen. I'm telling you, if we'll turn back to God, amen, and we'll turn back to him, I'm telling you the blessings of God. He said, you remember, I've been good to you, amen, and we'll turn back to him. I remember this past week, amen, I, I was reading, amen, and over in Sylacauga, boy, I'm telling you what, it stirred my heart. It made me mad as a devil, amen, but you know what? The police, amen, they got a new chief down there. And the chief says, you know what? <laughs> uh, praise God, we're going to put on our patrol cars on the back of every one of them in God we trust. Right. Amen. I said, praise God. Amen. And you know what? You, it was an outrage, amen, like you ain't ever seen. 
I'm telling you, crying out against it, amen. We've got to leave God out of everything uh, that has to do, the government has to do with it. Uh, there's a separation of church and state, a bunch of crybabies, amen. And you know what I thought? I replied to it, amen. Uh, first of all, I thank God, amen, uh, that the new chief has enough sense uh, to know that there's a God in heaven and he is still uh, the one who we trust in. Uh, but you know what I said? Look, if you don't like that God, amen, on anything that the government has to do with, uh, politely pull out your wallet and take all them crisp bills you have and turn them over to somebody that does and we'll pay a tenth of it uh, to the God of this Bible. Amen. It's according. Amen. You know what? It ain't a problem. Amen. They ain't, they ain't about to take them bills out of their pocket. Amen. It's God and God we trust on it, don't it? Amen. But they'll let it alone. Amen. Uh, preacher, we don't want to go that far. Amen. We just don't want it on the patrol cars. Amen. And by the way, we don't want it in the courtrooms either. We're going to take it out of the courtrooms too. Amen. It's amazing, amen, how all that stuff gets going. But you know what? That's the kind of condition our country's in. We've forgotten God. We wouldn't now listen, amen. It only gets worse, amen. You think about it, amen, where we're at in our day. Remember years ago, amen, the voice of one woman, I'm telling you what, uh, she, she cried out against prayers in the school system. Uh, you know what, I don't know if you know it, uh, but that woman died a wicked death, amen. Uh, you know what, she died a death, I'm telling you, a wicked death. Do you understand? Uh, she cried out against God, amen, and to get prayer out of the schools, and God, amen, uh, poured out his wrath upon it, amen. Uh, but you think about it today, amen, and as we think about what God's done, in this country, amen. And now in the school systems, there are no longer prayers, amen, unless you pray unto Allah, amen. I'm telling you, it's amazing how they can assemble around there and teach them. I seen uh, this past week how where there was a daddy that was outraged, amen, how that his daughter was taught how to trust, amen, uh, Allah in the, in the classroom, amen. And you know what? That's where we had. I kicked the true and living God out. I move every other God in, amen. Uh, but now look what's going on in our schools, amen. You ever seen the mass shootings that's happening in our schools? Amen. Uh, you can't take God out of anything and expect it to work. I'm telling you, that's your schoolhouse. How can I tell you that's your home? Amen. Uh, you can kick God out if you want to. How about you going to pay a high price? Amen. When you do, amen. You're going to pay a high price. Amen. When you kick God out. Amen. But we think about, amen, this country. Amen. They removed, amen, the Ten Commandments. How I find, amen. Uh, also, amen. Uh, thousands upon thousands of children being abducted. Amen. To fulfill some sexual gratification of some pervert. Now listen, <laughs> that's the land which we live in. You know why? Because there's not a whole lot of consequence to us anymore. Our laws now protect a bunch of criminals, amen, and a bunch of crooks. We'll give them a slap on the wrist, amen. I send them down there and give them good health care, amen, a good dental plan, let them watch color TV, amen, even put basketball goals out for them to go play, amen, and do all that other stuff. So it ain't that big of a deal. I will pay them and do, we'll do all that and feed them three times a day. I'm telling you, friend, we've forgotten God, amen. And we ought to get back concerned about that, amen. You know what? It's amazing how we've passed the laws to protect animals, amen, and we murdering babies by the thousands, amen. I'm telling you, this country has forgotten God, amen. Uh, that's where it's at. We've forgotten what God, who God is. Yeah. We think about it, they murdering babies. Can you imagine? I never thought, amen, we'd see that, but you know what we are. And now, you know what? Even a young girl can, can, can become a child. Right. Amen. And I can tell you, it wasn't of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And she can go have an abortion without ever telling her parents. Can you imagine? That's where our country's falling to. You would have never thought it'd be that way, but it is. Now you think about it, Brother Brad, I wrote this down. Amen. What about even in the Pledge of Allegiance? You know what? No longer can they say one nation under God. Can I tell you the only thing? We also kicked out his presence. And it's power, right. and it's protection, yeah. and it's provisions. Yeah. All that went with it. Amen. Don't think, don't fool ourselves for one moment. Yeah. Can I tell you, I personally believe America right now is reaping of her good days. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. She sold a lot of good days. Yeah. And I think she's reaping of those good days. But there's coming a day, amen, when she's no longer going to reap of the good days. Right. She's going to be reaping of the bad ones. Amen. Yeah. 
And I'm telling you, that's where we're living at today, amen. We have forgotten God. And that's, we're going to pay the consequences of it too. Well, you know what I find out, amen? The such, such support for the sodomites. Brother Perry mentioned that this morning. I never believed I'd see the day. Amen. I got a sister that's one, amen. It's still wicked. It's still ungodly. And the moment, amen, that it was revealed, amen, cried out against it and told her, hey, that's wicked, amen, it's ungodly, amen. And you know what? Others did too, but now they've changed their minds and all of a sudden it's all right. Amen. But it's still wicked. It's still as wicked today as it was the day it happened, amen. And you know what? We can parade it on our streets, amen. Can I tell you young people something? You young men, it's God's will, amen, if you're going to marry to marry a young woman, amen. Amen. You young ladies, it's God's will, amen, if you're going to marry to marry a young man, amen. I'm telling you, it won't ever be anything other than that. It won't ever be right in the eyes of God. You might as well go and get that settled now. God will leave you a choice. And if you don't make the right one, amen, according to this Bible, you're going to pay a high price for it, amen. I'm going to tell you, you're going to regret the day you did. Amen. Now you think about it. Amen. That's where we're at in this day. We're paying a high price, ain't we? We're paying a high price. This country's in a mess. Have you ever thought we, now listen, the welfare system that we have in, pro, in place today. Amen. You know what? It goes against this book. Amen. Now I'm all for, amen, people that got help needs help. Amen. But I ain't for, amen, a bunch of bums that won't work, amen. I'm telling you what, they wouldn't go to work, amen, in a pie factory tasting pies. You young men, listen to me tonight, this morning. It is God's will, amen, for you to get a job, amen, and go to work and for support of your family, amen. That is not anybody else's responsibility. That is the responsibility that God gave you. It won't ever be God's will for you to lay up on mom and daddy, amen, and draw welfare all the days of your life. I get a job and go to work, amen. Amen. Come home, I sweat, amen, I with blisters on your fingers, I thanking God that he gave you a job, amen. 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 And you can lay down at night smiling and saying, thank God, amen. He's been good to me. I'm telling you, friend. And you know what? Your wife, amen, is to respect you a whole lot more, amen, and she don't have to do it all herself, amen. I'm telling you, she ought to be able to stay home and keep the house, amen, and raise the children for the glory of God. And my friend, now we've gotten away from that, and we're paying for it. Paying for it. We live in bombs, Amen. It's not God's will for you to be a bum. Amen. But, you know, that's where we're at. Oh, yeah. we, hey, we've fallen, amen. We've forgotten God. What does God have to say about it? I used to tell them all the time. It makes some folks mad. They get over it. Listen, whether it's my son or yours, amen. If he don't work, this Bible said he ought not eat, amen. He's worse than an infidel. If you'll quit feeding him, amen, amen. and pamper him, he'll go to work. Amen. 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 It comes a time, hey, you can't eat here if you don't work. <laughs> Amen. I mean, listen, only, <laughs> my sons are 12 and 8, but you know what? They work. Around the house, they're going to do something. Amen. Listen, they ain't going to lay up and pile it all up on mama, amen, for her to do it all. I teach them while they're young, amen, and then when they get a little older, they can go get a job and they'll know something about work. And today they'll stare at a line for 15 minutes before they realize you have to pull a cord, amen, to crank it. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, it wasn't that way when we was growing up. Amen. We had to cut grass knee high with a push mower, amen. Had to take you all day uh, to make five dollars and spend two of that on gas. I'm telling you, friend, my how we have changed and fallen in this day. We have fallen. We are far from where we used to be. You know what else I find? Not only, amen, is this country, but our churches have forgotten God. Amen. We have moved God out of the church. You remember in Revelations, he's walking around in chapter number two in the midst of the church. In chapter number three, he's on the outside knocking. I want him back in. He's done been replaced and with all the programs and the plans and the plays and the puppets. Amen. How they moved God out and had it their own way. One thing they forgot, there's a high price to pay for that. No presence and power of God. No, hey, I'd rather have a presence and power of God. Amen. I want God to move. Uh, there's souls weighing in the balance. There's homes falling apart. Uh, we need God uh, to stand in our midst. Amen. And get the glory. Amen. And that's the only way he'll be glorified. 
Amen. Forget about, hey, today's Super Bowl Sunday. Amen. How many big screens do you imagine is across the land in the sanctuary? This is the house of God. Amen. It's not a place for a party. Amen. In the house of God. Listen, Brother Perry, I'll roll it up front. We're going to have a Super Bowl party today. God help our souls. Amen. You know, break, break out the popcorn. Amen. Let's just have us a time. Amen. We do that in the fellowship hall. Amen. When we get done, we, we ain't doing no Super Bowl in the fellowship hall either, so don't get no ideas. Amen. Now listen. When we can go back to the back, amen, and have fellowship and food and all that stuff, this is the sanctuary. It's the house of God. Oh, man. But man, this is one of my favorite places on earth. I've got more help in this place than anywhere that I know. Listen, amen, it's still the house of God. Now understand, amen, but we, our churches have fallen. Amen, and forgotten God. Listen, it take, you know what? God's been good to the church. <laughs> oh, man, God, has God been good to the church, man? I'm telling you, what has God done for his church in this day? Oh, brother, I'm telling you, he's steady. Heaven, the church of the living God. And the church says, well, now that we've got better clothes and we've got better jobs. Hey, the one I used to have, amen, and I made $12 an hour and had to work 48 hours to make it. But I still able to make it to the house of God and I supported my family. It ain't good enough no more. Uh, so I go get one, amen, where I don't have time, have to come, amen. And we forgot God, amen. And you know what? We're going to pay the price. We're going to pay the price. Amen. We won't get away with it. Amen. We're going to pay for it. I'm going to show you. We're going to see it in a few minutes. We'll pay the price. But you'll find, amen, the church is going to go into that place. Now we find, look over there in Deuteronomy. Chapter number 8. You remember what he said? And in verse number 11, he said, beware. He said, There's fin you finna get yourself in a dangerous position. You may I get out of vehicles when go visit in places somewhere I ain't. The first thing I'm doing is looking for a beware dog sign. I hate dogs. Amen. I, they, <laughs> Amen. No offense, Kim, but I'm telling you, these dogs, amen, I'm, now, I can handle the little ones, amen, you can move across. Amen. But it's some big ones, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Them that I can kick and slide across the floor, I ain't worried about, it, amen. But them, amen, that grab all of your britches and take you with it, amen. <laughs> That's the ones I'm concerned about. <laughs> hey, beware. Yeah. And I look around, I say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, I'm going to carefully inspect this situation before I move too far from the door of this vehicle. Amen. And if the porch is closed in, I'm not about to walk up on it. Amen. Until somebody comes to the door. Now listen, we've been in a few places like that. Back to the car we'd go. Then people come to the door looking like, what's wrong with him? Look, beware. There's danger there. I mean, you done posted it out front of the house and told me there's some danger. You know what God's doing? God's saying, beware. God's saying, I'm posting it out. I'm posting it for you. I'm letting you know there's danger. There's some danger ahead in your life. He said, listen here, Israel. There's some danger ahead. You know what he says to us today at the church? Listen, church. There's some danger. You better beware. Don't forget God. When you do, you're going to pay a high cost. You're going to pay a high price for it. Don't forget God, but you're going to pay for it. Can I say, first of all, look what he said in first, or in Deuteronomy chapter number 4. You know what he told them? In verse number... Chapter number four, let's see, in verse number six, I want so verse number nine and verse number ten. He said, Only take heed to thyself, and to keep thy soul diligent, lest thou forget the things thine eyes have seen. <laughs> Listen, our eyes have seen some things our children hadn't seen. Listen. He said, The eyes have seen, lest thou depart from the heart all the days of thy life. Listen, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb. When the Lord said unto thee, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, uh, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. We forget God, we're going to lose our children. Listen, listen now. We've seen things our children and grandchildren haven't seen. Amen. Brother Perry, I've been born again. I've been saved. I've seen God do some great things. Some of these children in here has been saved, amen. 
They ain't out of the waters yet. They might be saved, amen, but there's a wicked world we live in. Amen. If we don't want to lose our children, we better not forget God. Don't forget how good God's been. Listen now. I'm telling you, trying to help you, don't forget God this morning. If you forget him, you're going to lose your children. I think about it this way. I wrote this down. You know, when it comes to this Christian faith, amen, our forefathers, amen, they experienced it. You know what? They experienced to walk with God. They love Jesus, amen, and I'm telling you what, it proved out in their lives. It meant something to them, Brother Terry. Our forefathers, amen, they experienced it. You know what? Our fathers, they inherited it. It wasn't as important to them. You know what I find? We, amen, to us, amen, it's a convenience. See how the decline, amen, went from an experience to an inheritance to a convenience. Can I tell you, our children and our grandchildren see it as a nuisance. Now listen, that's the decline we live in. Yeah. I promise you there's children sitting on Baptist church pews this morning that could care less right. about being at the house of God. Amen. They got their minds everywhere else. Yeah. They only there because they made to be. Amen. And if they was left the choice, they'd stayed at home and went and did their own thing. Right. Listen, young people. Amen. You better not forget God. Don't forget how good God's been to you. Listen, you living on mom and daddy's shirt tails today. But there's coming a day when you're going to be your own man. You're going to be your own woman. Don't forget God. God's been so good to you. He's, he's gave you a life. And you know what he's done? He's delivered you. And he's gave you a life that's worth living. He's gave you a goodly houses. He's put clothes on your back. Food on your table. He's put a shelter over you, friend. Now listen, when, you get a cho- when it's time to make a choice, don't forsake God. If you do, you're going to pay a high price. I know folks today think, sit around and they think, well, we've been here in church ever since we was born. We deserve it. You don't deserve it. One choice, one bad choice you make, and you're going to pay a high price. Yes, sir. There's a lot of them that sit on these church pews, listen, that went out and had children out of wedlock. Mom and daddy crying out saying, he's not for you. He's not for you. Don't do it. I got this thing all figured out, daddy. Amen. He's the one. He's a bum. He won't work. But... When he gets me, he's going to take care of me. He don't even love himself. He's not going to love you. He's not going to take care of you. I don't fall for that lying devil. It's out of hell. Amen. You'll be out there with children out of wedlock, and you'll pay a high price. Uh, Six months later, he'll be out the door, and you'll be left to raise that child by yourself. Amen. You'll pay a high price. Don't do it. Don't get caught up in that. Amen. You boys, amen, she might be pretty, amen, uh, but you better look deeper uh, than what you see it amen. and know uh, that it could be the devil, amen, right, amen, taking you out of the house of God, amen. Hey, don't forget God. You better know there's a God in heaven, amen, that loves you and says, I want to be good to you. I want to be good to you. Amen. But you better know you've got a choice to make. Amen. You've got a choice. God will let you do it your way. But you, hey, you're going to pay the price. Don't ever forget it. Amen. You'll pay the price. Our children. Can you imagine? He said, you forget God. Hey, you might be saved. And yes, you may be living for God. Amen. And doing good. But you forget God. Amen. And it ain't going to be so well with your children. The iniquities of the fathers visited the third and fourth generation. Amen. Those children and grandchildren, you're supposed to be teaching, amen. Somebody else will be teaching them. Only they won't be teaching them this book. Amen. Listen. Amen. But God say, number two, we won't even long, only lose our children. Look what he said in, in chapter number five. Amen. We'll lose our children. I don't want to lose mine. <laughs> oh, listen. There's some things that's worth than dying. Amen. One of those, amen, would be, be knowing that my children were living in sin and it was my fault. 
Hey, man, I don't ever want to listen. Listen, parents, we have desensitized our children to what's important. Oh, that ain't important. I'm telling you, what you do says a lot to your children. You can say I love God, but what you do, amen, is what they're looking at. Amen. And we've desensitized them to our priorities. What's right? Children, we want you to grow up. Hey, we want you to go to church, amen, then you ought to practice it yourself. Amen. 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 You hit and miss, amen, amen, and lay around. Guess what? When children get old enough to make their own choice, what a day's fun day, amen. We'll get to that in a moment, amen. I got better things to do on Sunday, mama. Amen. And it'd be bad to wake up every morning knowing that I put that in them. Amen. I instilled that. I, by my action, told them it wasn't important. Amen. But you know what? Well, number two, we'll lose our church. Amen. Now you think about it. Look what I look in chapter number five, verse number twelve. Deuteronomy chapter number five, verse number twelve. He said, "Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God." He said, "In it thou shalt not do any work, uh, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy maid servant nor thy nor thy man servant nor maid servant nor thine ox nor thine ass nor any of thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within the gates." He said that they that the man servant and the maid servant may rest as well as thou, and remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt. Listen, he's been good to you, amen, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out of, he said thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm, therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Now then it was on Saturday, but if you'll read the book of Acts, amen, amen, you'll find that it was the first day of the week, the Lord's day is Sunday. Amen. Today, now it's become fun day. Amen. Fun. Hey, we're going to go spend our days at the ballpark instead of the house of God. We're going to go spend our, hey, it's family day. I work all the time and it's the only day I got. The best place you can have your family is in a King James Bible believing house of God. Let God help their soul and direct their paths. Amen. amen. But we'll find, amen. I don't want to lose the church. Can I tell you, I come dragging into the church, amen, my life was in a mess. This is my fellowship. This is my friendships. I don't want to ever, listen, we, listen, you know what he said, you forget God, you'll get to the place where church won't even be a part of your life. I can't even imagine that. Brother, I ain't saying it couldn't happen, because I've seen some of the best, amen, that used to walk in the aisles, amen. That now on the Lord's day, they got other things to do. You forget God, amen, you get to the place where church is no longer part of your life. Can you imagine not waking up on Sundays and going to the house of God? I know where I would be not long after. In the same old hell hole I was in before I came. Boy, didn't know how to be a husband. Didn't know how to be a father to my children. I don't ever want to return to that state. Oh, can I? I'm going to tell you, I've been saved 20 years, amen, this month. The 25th, the, hey, the 25th of this month, 20 years. And my children to this day has never woke up and said, Daddy, are we going to church today? Hallelujah. Praise on, God, yeah. amen. Yeah. By the help and the grace of God, there won't ever be a day. Or they wake up and say, are we going to church today? Forget God. You're going to lose your children. You're going to lose your church. Can I tell you something else you're going to lose? You're going to lose that Canaan land. A whole lot better land than Egypt was. It ain't heaven. Don't misunderstand. It ain't heaven. But it's a whole lot better than Egypt ever was. It's a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Oh, my friend, hey, I'm living better than I ever have, thank God. Hey, you know what that might, hey, listen, I'm living better than I ever lived. Amen. Amen. You know what? 
God gets all the glory for that. Amen. I, it ain't by my own health or wealth or prosperity. I'm living better than I ever have. God said, you forget me. How you going to lose Canaan? Amen. I said, I don't want to lose a, a Canaan land. Amen. It's been good to me. Amen. Don't fall for it. Amen. That old devil's a liar. Amen. You lose your church, you lose your Canaan. But you'll look in chapter number 11, I mean, chapter number 8 and verse number 1. You don't want to lose Canaan, do you? That land flowing with milk, and honey, that's a whole lot better than the brick and mortar, ain't it? Yep. <laughs> I mean, oh man, he said, yeah, I'll close with this, and all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe and do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, that thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, Look what he said. And fed thee with manna which thou knowest not, and did thy fathers, and neither did thy fathers know that it might that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. You forget God, you're gonna lose your commandments. This book here has been good to me. How it's ordered my life. You forget God, you're gonna lose it. I remember my life without this book. It wasn't a pleasant sight. I didn't have no restraints. I didn't have no rules. I did it my own way. Can I tell you there's a high cost for forgetting God? He said, you're going to lose your command. Remember what this, what did the son say? He said, it is the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and what a light to my path. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. He said in another place in Psalms 119, 130, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. You know what? I need some more understanding this morning. I don't want to lose my commandments. I don't want to ever get up. I've had too many good times in the pages of this book. I don't want to ever get up a day, amen, and not have this book. Amen. Would you stand? We'll get somebody to play this morning. Maybe. Maybe, hey amen, you, you, God showed you this morning, there's a high cost to forgetting God. There's a high price to pay when you forget God. You might do it and God will let you do it. But it's going to cost you. 